Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study, and we're so glad you can join us. But before we get into the Word, let's take a moment in praying. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for being a good Father to us each and every day, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for your endless grace and mercy, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for Jesus' blood that it covers all of our sins, Lord, for we have all have sinned, Lord. And But Lord, we also just thank you for the forgiveness that you give us, and that we're we are able to go and forgive those around us, Lord, that we don't have to hold on to ought or anger against them, Lord, but we can just forgive. And Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We're glad to have you with us. And that we get to discuss the word of the Lord together. So thank you for joining us. And especially want to thank the those that have chosen a partner with us to carry on the work of this ministry alongside of us. We are blessed immensely by you, by your prayers, by your sewing, and by liking, subscribing, and sharing these episodes on the, any number of the platforms that you can find a day of prayer on with others so that they too have the opportunity to learn and grow in knowledge, but most importantly, in relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So thank you for helping us to build the Lord's house and to ensure that the gospel goes forth throughout the four corners of the earth. Thank you immensely. We are blessed by your obedience to the Lord and your heart in helping us in this ministry. And we pray for you daily multiple times throughout the day as the Lord leads that he just bless you abundantly so thank you for for the work that you do in and alongside this ministry but now let's get to the real reason that we're here right to discuss the word or and by that I mean to read the word and hear what the Holy Spirit has to say amen amen all right so we are we left off in Acts chapter 7, verses 37 through 50, and there was still more to discuss, but before we begin discussing it, because we were in the middle of something yesterday, we are going to reread that section of scripture. So can I get a volunteer to do that, please? I will. Okay, promise? This is that Moses who said to the children of Israel, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear. This is he who is in the con- congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with their fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us, whom our fathers would not obey but rejected. And in their hearts they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. As for this Moses who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifices to the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer me slaughtered animals and sacrifices during the forty days in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You also took up the tabernacle of Molech, and the star of your god Remphan, Images which you made to worship, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our father had made the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for God for, for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? 
or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? Mm -hmm. Amen. So, usually we open up the floor to allow the opportunity for each of you to share what the Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering, and, and then to ask any questions. And we are going to do that, but um, we need to continue where we left off yesterday. And La Charles, you were in, still in the midst of sharing what the Holy Spirit was speaking and ministering to you. So why don't we pick up there? Okay. So what the Lord was sharing with me and showing me here was that you can it actually relate to all these things throughout. Um, it's not just... Can, can you all, explain? What are these things? This entire history lesson, as you call it, that, that Stefan is giving them. Okay. I just want to make that clear for the listeners. All right? Yes. Okay. But the Lord was also showing me here was that if you look at 49... Um, and you compare it to what he said to David, it's not quite the same. Da he didn't say to David, what are you doing? That's not going to contain me. But he honored and respected that David wanted to build him a house. And it was only because of David's perspective on his true and willing heart to serve the Lord, not just, oh, Lord, I have to do this. And I'm, I'm doing it with a grudging heart. And I'm I really don't want to. I want to be off doing my own thing. What you can see here is like um, when Stefan talks about Moses and how they said, ask for this Moses, we don't know what happens to him. They didn't attempt to go see where he was. And he also, this is just a side note that I found interesting. Was, Explain, but they didn't go attempt to see where Moses was? Meaning that they understood where Moses was because they understood what the fire was. If you can Okay. See, they understood that the fire was the Lord talking. Who was he talking to? He wasn't talking to himself, mumbling on. But they knew Moses was still up there. But they were unwilling to wait and be patient, though they didn't want to wait. They're, this was in their heart the whole time, as soon as Moses mm -hmm. went up the mountain. This wasn't, oh, it's been a couple of days, now we'll do this. This had been cultivating their minds and saying, yeah, when Moses goes up the mountain, then we'll take our chance. Mm. And you and that um, also remind me of how when you look at this, the only person who was not in the camp that they say by name was Joshua, besides Moses. Moses was up on the mountain and Joshua was not there. But if you look, the Lord said, take the priest with you up the mountain, but they can only come part way. Then I want you to continue to the summit. And there he spoke with Moses. And the Lord was pointing out that even in that, they were still being stubborn and rejected what the Lord told them because nobody else was on the mountain at that point. They had all went down except for um, maybe Joshua. I'm not quite sure because he was the only one who wasn't in the camp when they decided to celebrate. And you could also say maybe Caleb because he didn't do anything wrong. So the Lord should show me here was that it was a rejection on all forms of what they were doing. It wasn't just uh, one, I only sinned once and now the Lord's cracking the hammer on you. This was a continual process of being rebellious and going against what the Lord said. And that's what Stephen is truly getting out here. First of all, he's also saying that there is, there is a chance for repentance and you could see it in what the Lord's saying. There's always a chance for repentance. Because if you read further in Amos, um, into chapter 6 and part of it, and chapter 7, how he's talking about all the things that he saw the Lord was going to do. And Amos said, Lord, don't do these things. That's me paraphrasing it. And the Lord said, I will relent from that. And you could see Stephen's also bringing out the goodness of God even here. Because... They were not consumed. I know if it had been me, I would have been on them like white on rice and saying, this is what you get because you did this. And what the Lord was showing me was it was his way of showing mercy to them. Yes, he couldn't allow them to enter the promised land because they had sinned. And that brings me to a different point. This is also a thing the Lord showed me was that even with Moses, it was not the one error that made him miss out on the promised land. Mm. 
There was okay. multiple, like when he lost control of himself with the tablets. Mm. Well, These, let's let's look at that for what it is. Yes. It's an anger issue, right? Yes. Okay. It was clearly something that came up repeatedly, yes? Yes. So it wasn't fully dealt with. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And And then we see the end result of that. Yes. By not dealing with it fully, ultimately it caused him to miss out. Yes. Okay. Even, even with Moses uh, and all the mighty works that, he, that the Lord did in and through him, because things weren't dealt with fully, it caused him to miss out. He was not allowed to. He could see the promised land, and that was a blessing and gift from the Lord. Yes. But he could not set foot in it. Yes. So it matters. And yep, in the natural we could say, oh, that's harsh. But no, what did the Lord say? His actions, and because they were on display for everyone to see, taught the people rebellion. Which, what did he say to Saul? To King Saul? Hmm. He desired obedience over sacrifice. Yep, but he also said greed is as idolatry and rebellion is as witchcraft. So it is worshiping something else in the place of God. Both of those, right? Yes. Okay. So it matters for us, right? Yes. But now that it has been stated, and you can search that out in the Word, we can understand and deal with it in our lives. And by deal with it, I mean uproot it and replace wickedness and sin and disobedience with truth. Right? Our actions, yes. our behaviors will change because now we understand in greater detail. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. What else? And the final point was... <coughs> Stephen's also pointing out how everybody knew about this. This wasn't just placed on one person or it was up to the leadership. It wasn't just you're the leader so you get all the blame for it, but everybody knew what was supposed to happen. Because if you look at it and that your comment about Moses at the went the rock brought me brought to my remembrance was that it couldn't have been teaching rebellion unless the people knew what he was supposed to do. Mm. They must first have known that Moses was supposed to speak to the rock in order to know he didn't do that and was being rebellious. Though I don't, it was his anger that got in the way, which even still that's not acceptable. It's not an excuse. Well, let's go, let's go back, right? Exodus yes. 19. All right, what did, what did we read in verse 5? This is what the Lord looks for always, right? You brought it up. I desire what? Obedience. Rather than sacrifice. Verse 5, sorry, Exodus 19, we'll begin in verse 3. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all the people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall, make, you shall be to me as a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Everybody had the opportunity. But then if you look and you continue in verse 9, right? It says, uh, and the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak to you and believe you forever. So Moses told all the words of the people to the Lord. And then in chapter 19, right, he continues, and, and the Lord says, Hey, have the people come near to me, Right? But yes. in verses 16 through 19, right, when, they, when the people arrived, there were thunderings and lightning and a thick cloud and the sound of a trumpet, right? 
and they all stood at the foot of the mountain. Now the Lord had already given instructions on boundaries and and so on and so forth, right? Yes. But it says, um, in there, in verse 19, Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. So all the people heard, all, or and I'll say it in this way, all the people had the opportunity to hear. Right? Yes. Yes. Now, let's let's make a connection here. This is important, right? And this is why it's important. In Deuteronomy 18, there is a which is where verse 37 comes in, right? Yeah. From Acts 7. This is that Moses whom who said to the children of Israel, The Lord your, your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear, right? That's, that's actually in Deuteronomy 18.15. The Lord speaking to Moses, right? So, the Lord confirmed his word. And, and I'll give you three examples. During Jesus' ministry, where the Lord audibly spoke. So the question is this, same with the children of Israel in the wilderness. Did they actually hear the voice? Or did they only hear thunder and lightning, right? Uh, The first one is in John, I believe. Let me get there. Yes, John 1. Begins in verse 29 and goes to verse 34. Can I get a volunteer to read that? I'll do it. All right, brother. Give me a second here. <clears throat> John 1, 29 through 34. Please, yes. The, the key is verse 32, but... Yeah, okay. I was just getting there. <laughs> Nobody else volunteered, so I had to scramble to... I appreciate it, I was it, writing brother. a note, so... All right, so John chapter 1, verse 29 through 34. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man whose ranks before me, who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. Verse 32. And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit ascend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen him and borne witness that he is the Son of God. Okay. Everybody get that? Yes. So who observed it? John the Baptist. Baptist. John the Baptist. But we know there were multitudes that came out to the wilderness to see and hear John the Baptist and to be baptized by him. But yet only John the Baptist heard and saw. Okay? Yes. Yes. Now, that's not the only time. Um, It's either Luke 9, 28 through 36, or... Matthew 17, um, let's see, uh, verses 1 through 9. Can, can I back you up for a second there? Absolutely, brother. Uh, I'd like to um, um, yeah, go. maybe challenge what you said there or, or help get a better, deeper understanding. Okay. You're saying that only John... Heard it's, the voice. It says John bore witness. It does say John bore witness, but I, I take that to read that what John is John the author is saying about John the Baptist is mm-hmm. that he was a credible witness. And thinking of that more is like what Jesus had m- mentioned once, I myself and I the Father bear witness. It takes mm-hmm. two to bear witness. So John the author 
and John the Baptist now, as, as John being the author, okay. and John the Baptist now we have two collaborating to bear witness, and it was important that we're bearing witness to authenticate that Jesus is who he says he is. Yet another authentic and, authentication. And Not, that, that's a possibility. Because I don't see it as a scripture saying only John heard. And that that's a possibility, although in here, right, it's, John the Baptist saying to his disciples, hey, this is who this is, right? So John looked up and John saw, and then it says John bore witness of these things. And it didn't mention John the Baptist and his disciples who then went with Jesus, right? So, yes. So we won't, we won't rule that out, right? But um, can I get a volunteer in Matthew 17, 1 through 9? I'll read it. (coughs) I'll read it in. All right. Go for it, sir. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and do not be afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Now as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell a vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Mm. So Jesus and, and the disciples that chose to be closest to him, right? Yes. They all heard and saw, right? Yes. yes. They all heard and saw the voice of the Lord. And then there is a third, and that's in John chapter 12. Excuse me, devil, a verse. It is really verse, begins at verse 27. And, well, we'll, we'll yeah, 27 through 32. We'll go with that. Oh, actually, 27 through 33. Okay, Dad. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. For, sorry. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the rule of, the rule of this world be cast out. And, and, I, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he will die. Hmm. So... Again, further instruction, right? Yes. But notice here, who heard it? Who who heard the voice of the Lord? I would say, like, um, Peter, James, and John, at least. Maybe. Heard I'd it. say, and some in the multitude. It just said, some heard it. Some heard the voice of the Lord, and some only heard the thunder and lightning. No, or saw the lightning, right? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, and some heard it had that it had thundered. But those that were in tune with the Lord were obedient to Him, right? Yes. yes. Clearly heard it. There's a distinguishable difference. What does He say? My sheep know My voice. Another's they will not follow, right? Yes. yes. Are you going to say that, sir? Um, no. Okay, would... but then there's the other other part, right? 
says, having eyes to see, they do not see. And having ears to hear, they do not hear. The Lord intended, even in Moses' time, that everyone would hear the instruction for themselves so they could have the vision, as it says in Habakkuk, right? Make a plane so that those that read it can run. Yes. Okay. Yes. They all had to hear for themselves. Hence, it's referenced in Romans and who and in Isaiah, who has believed our report, right? Yes. Okay. So, some heard it. Clearly, those that were following the Lord, right? My sheep know my voice. But others, it was just a, a natural weather phenomenon, right? <laughs> yes. Now, I mean, well, if we put it in today's terms. Yes, it's just so, the, the irony of that. That's all. That's, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and that's why I, I, let's go back to, that's why I said with John the Baptist, it says that John bore witness. It doesn't say everybody heard it. But John was given insight and revelation even from in the womb, right? Yes. yes. Uh, yes. And it was acknowledged by John the Baptist's mother. Right? Yes. As yes. soon as Mary, who was pregnant with Christ, with Jesus, the Christ, came near. Right? Yes. He yes. knew then. Why? He knew as a result of the Holy Spirit. Right? And, and now as we get to here in Acts, what Stephen is doing is pointing these same things out. Right? Yes. yes. He's giving the history, but he's giving it with revelation and insight so that everyone can understand, so they have the opportunity to hear and to see. And it, as, as the Holy Spirit does, he always points us to Christ. The ministering angels always point us to Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Right? Yes. yes. He, as we said in the previous episode, he's the door. He's the way we enter into the kingdom. Not through our own works. Right? Yes. Okay. And not through our own thoughts or ways, right? Yes. Even even David, when it says in Scripture, he followed the Lord out of the integrity of his own heart. Well, what does the Lord desire? Our heart. Right? Yes. So his heart was to the Lord. He was a man, and the Lord said that himself. He's a man after God's own heart, right? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. And his desire was to know God's ways and his thoughts, that they would be his, right? And, and that should be not just the prayer, but the thing or things we put in action in our lives Daily. And by daily, I mean moment to moment. Let's let everything pass by before the Lord and get his thoughts on it. And let him teach us his ways. And adhere to those. Make those the habits and the nature and the character and the attributes that people see in, our, in and through our lives. Not our own self, but the Lord and his glory shining in and through us, right? Because as it says, yes. the desire was always that he live and dwell within us, right? Yes. Okay. But in order to do that, we have to submit to him, humble ourselves and submit to God, resist the devil, right? Yes. Resist our own thoughts and our own ways, and our, right? But... Ask the Lord for his will in the matter, the situation, circumstance, even what to say and do so that he can be glorified in and through us, just like Jesus did. And that's what Stephen is teaching them here. He's letting them know who Jesus is, not just how he lived, but how he lived only further demonstrated who he is 
and how we, because he is the pattern example, should live out our lives before our God and Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, no, there's probably more to share, but we're, we're a little over on time. So um, let's pause there for today. And uh, with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord, and we thank you for showing us those things that you have in store for us, Lord, for guiding us down the destiny track that you've laid out before each and every one of us, Lord. We thank you for our leadership, Lord, that you're saving them, Lord, those that aren't already saved, God, that you are bringing them into your kingdom and into your life everlasting, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to do all that you said that you would do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to a Day of Prayers morning Bible study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through a Day of Prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select partner. Complete the form and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.